Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, I say what's coming in next week's episode. Some more news. Ben comes up with my superhero name, The Dragon Man. And I try to remember the day of the week, Sunday. At least I think so. Starting off the news this week, astronomers have released details about not one, but two signals that seem to be neutron star black hole collisions. Such an occurrence isn't particularly common anyway. In fact, both of these are the only ones to be detected so far. The collisions were detected using equipment from the United States and Italy, and it's believed that both were due to the black hole swallowing up the neutron star. This first time observation is of course a massive step in understanding these colossal members of our universe, and in turn, more about the universe itself. The first of these signals was detected on the 5th of January 2020, and the second just 10 days later, on the 15th. The findings were reported in a study published in the journal, the Astrophysical Journal Letters. In other news, the first of many incredible ancient hominin stories this week is a study published in Nature that has examined sediments from the famous Denisova cave in southern Siberia to determine the timings and history of its occupation by hominins. This cave, the site at which the first evidence of the mysterious Denisovans was uncovered, has been the subject of a lot of research, but until now, the exact order of its occupation was unclear. This new research found mitochondrial DNA of Denisovans in sediment dating back to between 250,000 and 170,000 years ago, while the first Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA appears in sediment towards the end of this time period. Then, a turnover in Denisovan MT DNA accompanies a change in the other animals that were present in the cave, and then there's also evidence for repeated inhabitation by both Denisovans and Neanderthals up to until around 45,000 years ago. From 130 to 80,000 years ago, only Neanderthals were present here, and then after this time, more Denisovans arrived, but they seem to have been a different population to the original inhabitants. After this, modern human mitochondrial DNA is then recorded in the cave, the first evidence of our species at the site and proof that all three hominins were living in this cave at one point or another. And now over to Bill with some more news. Thanks Doug. Up next in the series of exciting ancient human papers is the description of a previously unknown population of our genus Homo that inhabited Israel between 140 and 120,000 years ago. Known as the Nesha Ramla Homo after where they were discovered, it's been found that these people possessed a distinctive combination of both Neanderthal and archaic human features, but were also using technology that, before now, had been thought to only be in use by our own species or the Neanderthals. Cultural interactions between different lineages of humans alive at this time, as well as interbreeding between our own species and more archaic ones, are also indicated by this discovery. Furthermore, the discovery of such an archaic population living this late in geological history also challenges the idea that Neanderthals originated in Europe with it instead now seeming that the Western European Neanderthals were the last remnants of a far bigger population that once lived in the Levant, a population that repeatedly migrated both to Europe and to Asia. Just an incredible find that continues to expand our understanding of our own history and that of our extinct relatives. Super exciting stuff. But that's not it for amazing human finds. As I'm sure many of you will have seen recently, there's also been another kind of Homo that's just been found, and this one has actually been named as a new species. Meet Homo Longi, the Dragon Man. Based on a massive cranium discovered in the Harbin area of China, it dates back to around 146,000 years ago, and is actually one of the best preserved human fossils from this time. The brain capacity of this hominin overlaps with our own and was even larger than other species, and the researchers note that it displays a combination of both very archaic features and features similar to Homo sapiens. Incredibly, the paper finds that this skull, as well as others from China, actually represent a new East Asian lineage that they say is even more closely related to us than Neanderthals are suggesting that the diversification of our genus possibly happened even further back in time than we realised. However, many other workers caution that it was perhaps not wise to name this as a new species, as it's likely that there may not be this much of a real distinction between the Dragon Man, us and Neanderthals, due to the constant interbreeding that occurred. Additionally, some have suggested that the fossil might in fact belong to a Denisovan, which would be very exciting, but yes, the taxonomy and relationships of the Harbin cranium is likely about to get very complicated, and I doubt we've heard the last of it. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed. 
and we'll see you on Sunday. At least I think so. <laughs>